first it came for the foreigners, and we did not speak out. Then it came for the over 70s, and those with pre-existing lung conditions, and we did not speak out. Then it started closing our pubs and complicating our social lives. Well, you know what? We're darn well speaking out now. The coronavirus has gone too far. It is an invisible and dangerous enemy, like a rabid Cheshire cat. Do you remember in the Harry Potter books when Harry is given his father's invisibility cloak by dear old Professor Dumbledore? Imagine if Harry had put on that cloak stabbed Dumbledore in the face, and then begun a brutal killing spree with the intent of murdering every OAP in the world. That's what we're dealing with now. The coronavirus is an angsty schoolboy wizard. It's Daniel Radcliffe on crack, and it's out for blood. But is this virus really cause for panic? Or is everybody just overreacting like the idiots that they are? In the era of fake news, who can we trust to give us the facts? Thomas Wrinklesmooth, that's who. You want the truth, you've come to the right man. It's time to find out the actual truth. Silence in the courtyards, silence in the streets. The biggest twit in England is just about to speak. The old poem we all remember, perhaps more relevant now than ever before. Hi, how are things? I'm Thomas Wrinklesmooth, and I'm currently reporting from within my own flat. Why am I in my flat? I'm self-isolating, just like you should be. I know it's tough, guys, but you've got to stay safe, hmm? Got to be responsible and stay indoors. Now I'm about to go outdoors and get some hot footage of this pandemic in action. So strap in, it's going to be a dramatic ride. Let's find out how members of the public are dealing with the apocalypse. I panic by eggs. Oh no, I never did anything for me fitness before this lockdown started. Now I'm always out every couple of hours getting me daily exercise. I've taken up free running. I love to leap and bounce off of things and touch lots of different surfaces. <laughs> Mate, I'm outside because I'm an essential worker and I'm going to work. What do you do? I'm... Right, well, you know when you buy a jacket and there's a tiny thin pocket on the inside uh, that's too small to fit anything in? Yeah. Right, often in that pocket you'll find a spare button in a little resealable bag. What, do you make the buttons? No, I put the button into the resealable bag. And into the pocket? No, somebody else puts it into the pocket. I just put it into the bag. Is that essential? It sounds it's like pretty a... essential, mate. Yeah. Do you want these spare buttons exposed to the elements at a time like this? Christ almighty. I'm outside one of Britain's supermarkets and there's a queue of close to a hundred people snaking its way around the car park like the snake from the early 2000s mobile phone game Snake. Scenes like this are familiar up and down the country. No one's asked them to do this and there's plenty of room inside, but it just seems to be the case that for many Brits, the primal response to a crisis is to start queuing. I panic by eggs. Cleared them of eggs. Got 50 boxes in the car. But you do know eggs don't keep very long. Yeah, you've got to eat them within two weeks, pretty much. Which is not even close to long enough to get through this many eggs. It's all I eat now. It's all I do. Don't have the time for anything else. Putting so many eggs into my body, like a reverse battery hen. And this is because of the virus? Yeah, we're in lockdown, mate. Gotta get yourself a hobby you can do from home. Eating eggs. It's the new Zumba. 
Oh yes, it panic buying is making very challenging for our self-assistance, I must say. We had a man come by the other day, in fact, who wanted to buy some toilet paper, but well, the shelves were empty, of course, so he said, what could I use to staff toilet? To staff toilet? Hmm. Well, what's next? If we sell out of sandwiches, am I to invite the customers to the staff room to consume my falafel wraps? So I refused him. But she said, oh, well, I'd like to speak to the manager then. I said, oh, would you? Would you really? Well, all right, I'll go and get the manager. Why don't you wait here? I said, oh, well, have you got a chair so I can wait on? I said, no, I don't have a chair. If you're so desperate, I suggest you simply sit on the floor. He said, really? I said, yes, you sit right there on the floor, and I left. Anyway, I don't know if you've noticed, but I do have a slight lisp, and I think you must have misheard me because I returned to discover a human turd on the shop floor. Not for the first time, and I'm sure it won't be the last, but it's never a pleasant sight. I entered one of these supermarkets myself to discover firsthand the state that they were in, and also because I needed a bag of onions. As you can see, the shelves have been ransacked, leaving them as empty as Aunt Middleton's brain. But take a look at this. People are panic buying hand sanitizer, but leaving bars of soap. In the same way, they've bought all the toilet paper, but left the tissues, kitchen roll, and copies of Aunt Middleton's latest book. But just how seriously should we be taking this virus? The only way to be sure is to look to our political leaders for guidance and clarity. How about President Donald Trump, for example? Well, he has it under control, and it's going to be just fine. We have it under control, it's uh, going to be just fine. He's still shaking hands. People come up to me, they shake hands, they put their hand out. It's sort of a natural reflex. And he's been happy to keep bringing thousands of people together for his rallies. We have tens of thousands of people standing outside the arena, so... Is there a risk that there's that many people all close together? It doesn't bother me at all, and it doesn't bother them at all. Then it doesn't bother me at all, and it shouldn't bother you at all. It will go away. It'll go away. Just stay calm. Just stay calm. I am officially declaring a national emergency. National emergency! Two very big words. Two very big words from one small-handed man. I'll bet you thought he wasn't taking this situation seriously because of everything he just said and did. But no, because none of that really happened. And I've always known this is a, this is a real this is a pandemic. I felt it was a pandemic long before it was called a pandemic. And before you bring up the fact that he shut down the pandemic response team because they hadn't been used for years. Uh, some of the people we cut, they haven't been used for many, many years. And I don't like having thousands of people around when you don't need them. It might be worth taking into account that that never happened either. Yeah, I didn't do it. I mean, you say, you say we did that. I don't know anything you, about it. You don't. And in future, I hope you keep your nasty little questions to yourself. Well, I just think it's a nasty question. So, clarity and consistency from America, but what about here in the UK? Well, personally, I think Boris is a real top quality chap. He's doing a very difficult job at a really tough time, so it wouldn't be fair to criticise him in any way at all. A lot of people get put off by his slightly bumbling nature, and so don't listen to the excellent points he's making. So let's take some time to take him seriously and really listen to what his action plan is. While it's absolutely critical, uh, it's absolutely critical. Critical, yes. That we take the right decisions at the right time. Okay, he's not going to take the wrong decision at the wrong time. He's going to take the right decision at the right time. Great plan. So we mustn't do things which have no or limited medical benefit. Excellent strategy nor things which could turn out actually to be counterproductive. Brilliant stuff. Don't do things that are counterproductive. Some, some really interesting points there. Um, I'm sure you'll agree. But what about things like contamination? Should we still be shaking hands? According to the experts, definitely not. But as we all know, experts are just a bunch of liberal pansies worrying about nothing. I think the people in this country have had enough of experts. All of these experts. Oh, we need an expert. The experts are terrible. So what do ordinary blokes like Eaton-educated Boris think we should do? 
I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were, a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients and I shook hands with everybody. Great, so it's fine to keep shaking hands. I've taken that advice. I've been shaking hands with the postman, my neighbours. I, I, I'm shaking hands continuously. Me too, I've been shaking hands with shop assistants, uh, people I see when I'm out jogging. And I continue to shake hands and uh, uh, I think it's very important. It's very important to keep shaking hands and there are no risks at all because our Prime Minister has told us... I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus. What? It is now known that handshakes help to spread the coronavirus. To combat this, take a look at this instructional video. Adapting our body language is very important to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Remember, it can be passed on through hand-to-hand -hand contact. With that in mind, let's take a look at a common greeting and see if we can spot where they go wrong. Did you spot it? Let's take another look and pause the video when things take a turn for the worst. They are shaking hands. This sort of contact may seem trivial, but if either of these businessmen had the coronavirus and were aged over 70, had serious respiratory problems, and didn't wash their hands, they would almost certainly have instantly died. As an alternative to the handshake, why not try some of these government recommended greetings? A friendly wave. Thumbs up. Waving with both arms. Point at someone and gesture. You are okay. You are a great guy. You. You. Yes. You're okay. If you want to greet someone who is on the upper floor of a building and you are holding a mobile phone, try waving a coffee cup at them. Other approved greetings include the six-way fist bump, a passionate kiss, a friendly handshake, Writing your greeting on a cup and presenting that to the other party. And finally, finger fondling. This was a message from the government. Stay safe, protect the NHS, save lives. Now, we've heard that the over 70s are the most at risk, but let's find out what they think about the situation themselves via live video link. So, joining me now, Grandpa Joseph Quavers. How are you getting on with the current government guidelines? Hello? Do you read me? Uh, hi, I can hear you, but there's no picture. Have you got your webcam on? Webcam? There should be a button at the bottom of the screen to turn on the camera. I can't see the buttons. The screen is too low. What do you mean, low? The buttons are concealed beneath the laptop screen. Uh, do you mean the screen is closed? Have you opened your laptop? It's working. But is the screen open? Can you see the keyboard? Yes. Try pressing a button on the keyboard. What was that? G-flat. Are you playing an actual keyboard? Yes, it was my grandson's, but I'm learning, oh, Danny boy. Right, oh, put down. Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are cool. Stop playing, oh, Danny boy. Open your laptop. Okay, I've opened it. The screen is blank. It's probably gone to sleep, like my viewers. Try pressing a button. A button? Yes, on the keyboard. <coughs> Not that keyboard. Don't touch the keyboard again. Try pressing the space bar. I can't. Why not? You told me not to touch the keyboard. You can touch the laptop keyboard. Right, yes, yes, we can see you now. Oh, yes, I can see you. Cooey. Just tilt the screen up so we can see you. All right, then. Bit far. 
You're very quiet. Let me turn you up. Okay, it's time. God, that's really loud. We're getting an echo. How many of you are there? You're all talking in unison. Are you an a cappella group? Do you know old Danny Boy? Turn the sound down. All right, I heard you the first time. Oh! Hello? Hello? Good enough. Right, Joseph Quavers. How are you getting on with the current climate? Uh, has social distancing and self-isolation made things harder for you? Oh, it's not affected me at all. How can that be the case? Well, I'm only social distancing when I'd normally be at home anyway. What do you mean? I still see people, meet for a catch-up, go down the park. So you're ignoring the government's advice, but you are in the high-risk category. Well, only according to the experts. Well, yes. I don't trust experts. Good man. No one does. And the way I see it is if we stay at home, we're just letting the virus win. Very moving. A real example of the Blitz spirit. Courage in the face of danger from a member of the greatest generation. These guys fought off the Nazis. I think their immune system is tough enough to take on some Chinese bug. Actually, I was a child during the war. My generation didn't fight. The safest thing to do is to stay inside. Right, then why are you going out now? Blitz spirit. Not sure that makes sense, but okay. Thanks for talking, Joseph. I've got a lot of respect for you and all of your generation. You are the true heroes. I just stayed at home. But sadly, not every generation can be trusted. The brave men and women of dear old Joseph's generation are being put at risk by the carelessness of a younger and far less respectful group. I am talking, of course, about raucous teens. Despite government advice to stay at home and avoid social gatherings, the youth of today have continued to party like it's 1999, when in fact it is 2020. Year of the Rat. And just like rats, these vermin spread disease and don't pay enough attention to the government. Crowds of young people out in force despite the coronavirus threat. If I get corona, I get corona. At the end of the day, I'm not going to let it stop me from partying. As for millennials, well, you should be ashamed of yourselves. That lack of emotional intelligence, and actually I think it's a, probably a reflection of uh, the university system right now. To all you young millennial assholes that keep going out and partying, millennials, go home. Stop killing old people, please. They think they're immune to the virus. The young. We don't want them gathering, and I see they do gather, including on beaches and including in restaurants, young people. Young. He says there's a flu that we just all need to get over. <laughs> Have a beer. Half a days. <laughs> Ciao, guys. Even now the lockdown has been initiated, the evil youth continue to go out sunbathing and socialising. Can you all go home, please? It's not a holiday. It's a lockdown. That lack of... Just plain intelligence. Raucous teeth. Has been laid bare by this crisis. The youth of today. Young millennial assholes. Millennials. Young people. Millennials. They're imbeciles and they're idiots. I'm going to call them entitled. I'm going to call them selfish. I'm going to call them people who are used to ignoring what's going on around them. Now they're being told to conform with the new rules or be punished. And they're blowing up like a second-hand lawnmower. Take it in low mo, 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 take it in low mo. Despicable. And now to explain the actions of the generation that failed us, Bill Garson, an actual millennial, joins me via video link. Hi, thanks for having me on. Hi. Perhaps good afternoon would have been a more respectful greeting. You're right to thank me, but I think what you should really be doing is apologising for being, and I'm going to say it, an entitled, selfish, arrogant, young, youthful piece of scum. Thanks for joining me. Uh, now, why are you all ignoring social distancing rules? Um, I'm... I I'm not. I've been following the rules. I'm staying at home. 
I'm not going outside. That's probably a lie. You've been out twerking, haven't you? Uh, I'm sorry? You've been twerking your life away. I know what you lot get up to, buddy. I, I haven't, I haven't. But did you ever think about your grandmother while you were out sexting with thoughts? Um... Your disregard for the rules have as good as killed her. You've snapchatted your grandmother to death. You've shared a dank meme of disease with your unsuspecting relatives. Your carefree days of spiralizing and saying I can't even have doomed an entire generation. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, I'm following the rules. Most young people are. What do you mean? I've been staying at home. Staying at home? Bit of a lout, eh? Work shy layabout, hmm? No, 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 no. I work from home. Look, I just think that uh, we need to look out for each other at the moment. And, and we need to stay inside where we can. Right, and what, do you live on your own? Bit of a weirdo? No, 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 no. I live with my girlfriend. Um, she's out at the moment. Out but... partying? Hmm? Making TikTok videos with large groups? No, she's at work. She works for the NHS. Right. Uh, is she quite a bit older than you? Or she's you? a millennial. Right. Okay, well, if millennials are so great, then how do you explain all the beach partying that's been going on? Hmm? What do you make of the accusation that you're all a bunch of second-hand lawnmowers? I don't... I, I don't think... Are that. you a second-hand lawnmower? Uh, look, I just it's think... It's a very simple that. question, Bill. Are you, or are you not, a second-hand lawnmower? No, I'm not a second-hand lawnmower. Look, some of the people who are partying might just not be very well informed about the virus, and other ones might just not care. There are idiots in every generation. I don't think that any generation deserves unwarranted respect or unwarranted hatred. Uh, Generalising based around someone's age is ridiculous. Okay. Oh dear, it looks like we've lost him, but I am still picking him up on the earpiece. Uh, what's that, Bill? Okay, I'll pass that on to the viewers. Well, he says he's very sorry for being so selfish. But he is planning a party and doesn't really care about the consequences. If anyone dies as a result, he said, that's no skin off his nose. Hashtag sorry not sorry. Sickening. With more people working from home, travel vlogs are becoming even more tedious. This is the front left corner of my room. You know, I really learned a lot about myself here. It actually really affected me in a spiritual sense. It really changed me as a person. Now over here, we've got the front right corner of my room. While other workers are unable to carry on. Well, I'm a serial killer by trade, so you can imagine how tough it's going to be for me to carry on with these new restrictions in place. I, mean, I don't know what Mr. Boris Johnson was thinking. Uh, how am I meant to be doing that from home? I've already killed everybody I live with. You know, I did that ages ago. I've still got my gun, so I suppose I could get a few lucky shots out the window. But there's not enough in place for us freelancers. I'm going to be out there doing my killings, and the population's going to shoot way up, and the police are going to be out of a job. And how's everybody coping with the lockdown scenario? Well, given that gyms are now closed, people are turning to online fitness videos. One YouTube channel that's seen a particular rise in followers recently is The Body Coach TV, which involves workouts hosted by John Wick. So laying flat on our back, inhale, nice deep breath. Brilliant, right, sitting up. His history as a hitman gives him a unique physical prowess, and his hatred for the gangsters who murdered his dog make his fitness routines motivated and intense. So the higher you lift your knees, the more challenging it will be, the lower the easier, okay? So here we go, three, two, one. So just lifting those knees, 40 seconds. And if you want to go a bit harder, obviously you can go a bit faster. Lifting those knees. Boris Johnson's corona updates are now becoming so regular that he's having to appear midway through television programs to give us the latest news. Good evening. I want to bring you up to date on some of the things the government is doing to defeat the coronavirus epidemic in this country. Stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. Whoa! <laughs> and what are you going to do, eh? Fat boy? What are you going to do, sit on me? <laughs> Suffocate me to death. 
And the Pope himself has revealed that he's asked God personally to put a stop to this pandemic, which really was the least he could do, actually. We've had no word from God yet, although a disfigured pretzel closely resembling Jesus' face was discovered yesterday, which seemed to be mouthing, new number, who dis? The cause of the virus has finally been confirmed as 5G, so please avoid all devices with 5G capabilities. Equally, 4G causes diabetes, 3G causes IBS, Wi-Fi makes you hungry, HDMI cables cause homesickness, USB ports suck out your thoughts, AirPods give you oily skin, webcams steal your soul, Bluetooth attracts bees, and if you're still using a dial-up connection, you're mostly safe, but you are at risk of developing a minor yeast infection in the genital area, which, amongst other things, can impact self-esteem. So an uncertain time and an uncertain future. You might be feeling worried, anxious, low, scared. The economy may collapse. There may be many more deaths on the way, and we have no way of knowing for sure just how long this situation is going to go on. But what we do have is hope. Hope in the form of celebrity video messages. And as long as there are still famous people telling us to stay indoors, reassuring us from their yachts and their bathtubs filled with rose petals that everything will be all right, and singing. Well, I think we might just make it through this. And if we don't, just imagine that we did. Good night. cried for a second and I was going to do it by myself and then I thought above us on this sky imagine all the people living for today I developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus. It isn't hard to do. Yeah, and it sucks. Nothing they care or die for. Am I still shaking hands? Yes. Drink water and tea and sleep. That's all you gotta do. Am I still cuddling fans at the airport? Yes. Imagine all the people. Oh, boy. Even if everybody gets it. Like, yeah, people are gonna die. COVID-19 doesn't affect me. Get out there, don't change. I have got that a bit of a headache and I've got allergies. But I'm not the only one. Guess what, bitch? <laughs> Coronavirus! So, the experts, thank you for your advice, but it's not needed for me. Stop killing old people, please. And the world will live as one.